we will carry on our discussions on orthogonal complements and orthogonal projections actually. So today we are going to focus on uh, orthogonal projections, the different properties of the orthogonal projections, we are going to talk about the orthogonal projection operator and um, we will also see some of the applications of orthogonal projections. In other words that for example one of the applications that we are going to see is that if you can't solve a system, so imagine you have an incons inconsistent system then you can have what you call a best approximate solution to that inconsistent system actually. We know that inconsistent system have no solutions but we can have, can we, can we have approximate solutions and if we have approximate solution what would be the best approximation actually of the solutions of a given inconsistent system actually. So we are going to talk about you know orthogonal projections and you know some of the interesting facts about the orthogonal projections actually. Let's start with uh, orthogonal projections. Let's recall um, some of the um, facts. Okay. Some of the facts actually. Okay, and then really um, see the results. So uh, let V be an inner product space. So it's going to be an inner product space over a field F. This is what is fixed for our direct uh, discussion. So the F could be set of real numbers or it could be the set of complex numbers. Then we and uh, this V could be finite dimension and infinite dimensional actually. So recall some of the facts basically. So we, we saw actually in our uh, last two lectures, our last lecture especially, that if um, U is a, a finite dimensional subspace, so it's a finite um, dimensional okay, uh, subspace of subspace of say inner product space nu then the inner product space nu can be written as the direct sum of u and the orthogonal part of the u actually okay and recall that what we mean by the orthogonal part orthogonal part is the collection of all those vectors of um, v which are um, orthogonal to every single vector in U actually, okay, in U. <coughs> any, any U in the U, okay, so we know that orthogonal part, so we proved this actually. And one of the consequence of this result is really that if you take an arbitrary vector, uh, say V from nu, then you can always find say a vector u and a vector v uh, u from say u and a vector v minus u from u part okay u part such that that uh, v can be uniquely written as u plus v minus u actually okay u plus v minus u so if we can we can so, so this representation is really unique for every v you can find a unique u such that v can be written as u plus v minus u where u is from the subspace u and v minus u is from the orthogonal part actually i mean if you also remember that um, uh, if you if you remember that if u for example has um, so if you say that if u1 u2 and un is uh, uh, un is uh, say an orthogonal basis of orthonormal basis of say subspace u then you can actually write this u for every v you can write this u uniquely in the following form so this u is going to be uh, a, a sum that goes from uh, 1 to n 
and uh, in the terms of ui in other words this is u from the u since these are the basis of what you call u so the u can be expressed in the terms of ui where the unique uh, coefficients of the ui can be computed using this v that compute the inner product of the v with what you call ui then this would be the vector what do you call uh, u actually so in other words take any v you can find a u that can be expressed in this manner okay such that v is the sum of u plus v minus u where the u is from u and v minus u is from orthogonal part where the u has this unique what do you call shape actually you can also see this pictorially so for example if this is what do you call um, so imagine you have this finite dimensional solid space so it, this would be made up kind of a representation in you know three dimension so imagine that this is your plane u or maybe the subspace u then u part is the collection of the all vectors okay which are so this is u part vector so it's the collection of the all vectors which are orthogonal to any vector that you have in u okay so any vector here is always going to be orthogonal to the all vectors in u actually okay now if i pick an arbitrary vector what do you call from v so let's say both both of these intersect at zero okay because since um, so so this is really zero since um, uh, u is a subspace so it must contain zero and u part is also a subspace so it, so it must contain zero actually now if i take for example an arbitrary vector so let's call it v so this v is an arbitrary vector okay then this v is going to have a shadow okay so this is going to have a projection in what do you call um, in this subspace v and this shadow or the projection is going to be a vector u okay so you can treat for a given vector v you can treat this u which has this recipe as the shadow okay or the projection of this arbitrary vector v actually so no matter what vector you take this all of these vectors are going to have a shadow a projection in the subspace u where the u is finite dimensional actually okay so this is u so where is going to be the v minus u vector so if this is u vector okay so if this is u vector v minus u is going to be a vector that is orthogonal to this actually so if this is u and this is v then really this vector okay this vector or this vector is v minus u so this is v minus u actually this is v minus u so this would be the picture of what i am saying that take any vector v this v can be written as the sum of two vectors u and v minus u or v minus u okay where the u is really u can be really treat as the orthogonal projection of v on to the subspace u actually okay on the subspace u so orthogonal so u can be treated as the orthogonal projection of the vector v on to the subspace u actually okay so and by the way for every v you going to find u so for every v i'm going to find what do you call such a vector u actually so this kind of allows you to define a map actually this allows you Okay, for every v, you're gonna have a vector, a vector v. So let's let's call this map that swallows what do you call um, a vector v, okay, from uh, the space nu, okay, v, and spits out a vector u in the space subspace u actually. And we're gonna call this since since this p is a map that is mapping the v onto what do you call a vector u which is a part of the subspace u so we're going to call this as the orthogonal projection of the subspace u onto 
So, so, so this is the orthogonal projection map of the space V onto the finite dimensional subspace, what do you call U actually. Okay? So this is going to be, this is going to be, so let's let's put these symbols in this manner that this U belongs to this U and this V belongs to this V. So that so I can treat this PU as the orthogonal projection of the inner product space V uh, as what do you call onto the finite dimensional subspace U. So I have picked the entire space and I am kind of a projection it into uh, taking the shadow of each of those vectors in the, that space onto the subspace what do you call U actually. So, so this is this is called the orthogonal, so this map, this PU map is called the orthogonal projection okay, of the inner product space V or mu onto the finite dimensional subspace U. Okay? And what would be the explicit definition for it? That PU operated onto V gives me a vector u that has this formula. So you can write this as that this is equal to i equal to 1 to n. Okay? Uh, the vector v in a product with the basis of ui vector ui. So this is going to be really the definition of the orthogonal projection of a given subspace onto the orthogonal space actually. Okay. Okay. So, so we have it. Now, let's do the. Um, you can you can treat this as the definition that this map P U that throws a vector v from the space v onto vector u, which has this formula. Okay. Um, uh, onto the subspace U is the orthogonal projection of the space, you know, in a product of space V onto U. Okay? So let's do some examples and let's see some of the orthogonal projections. We have seen some of the projections already. For example, you might have seen that how to orthogonally project a vector in the inner product of space onto another vector. That would be the example of the orthogonal projection actually. Okay? So here is, here is the first example. So the example of the orthogonal projection goes like this actually. So take V to be say Fn, okay? Take V to be Fn, in other words, it's a, a, the Euclidean space Rn or a complex space Cn actually, okay? And take say U to be Say a subspace, so it's a subspace of what do you call say um, V, this Fn, with say basis, with some basis of the actors U1, U2, up to say Ur actually. Okay, so this is really the basis of U1, U2, Ur. Okay? You can, if you, basically, I mean, if you see, if these u1, u2, ur are vectors in Fn, okay, so these are the vectors in Fn. So if you treat these u1, u2, ur as vectors in Fn, so if I wish, then I can call this as a matrix actually. So u is a matrix in which the basis u1, u2, u r are the column vectors actually. So these are the column vectors. So I'm putting them as columns and this is going to be a basis vector. And what would be the dimension of this matrix? The dimension of this matrix is going to be that there are n rows, n rows and r columns actually. Okay? So I took the, the basis of the subspace u and I made a matrix out of it by taking the bases and putting them in columns actually. So 
So you're going to get this matrix out. And now let's see that what would be the meaning of orthogonal projection in this case. So if I take, for example, a vector v from fn, okay, so it's going to be a vector like, okay, so it's going to be a vector like v1, v2, vn, okay, vn, so it would be something like this, okay. So let's select if you took v from what you call a space vn, F, uh, fn, and now consider the orthogonal projection of this v onto the subspace u actually, okay. So let's put v u v by formula, I can calculate this orthogonal projection, i equal to 1 to r, let's take the inner product of v with each of these ui's and multiply with the ui. This is what that you're going to get. Now, what is the inner product on um, inner product on say mn uh, or, or, or in or, or, or in of n? So the inner product on fn is really um, ui star v and ui. Okay, so you know this is a scalar. Even if I wish, I can put this scalar, so, so this is a scalar actually, so this is an scalar, so if I wish I can put this scalar on the other side, in other words, I can write the ui here, okay, so let me, let me write it in this manner, so, so this would be equal to the ui, ui multiplied with this scalar, and what is the description of the inner product in fn, so it is ui star multiplied with the vector v actually. Okay, this is what that you're going to get, where the star means obviously conjugate transpose. Now, you know, all three are vectors. Okay, so I can write this as, um, as so if I apply, for example, associative law, so it's going to be i equal to 1 to r, so I can write this as ui ui is star multiplied by v. Okay, so by associative law I can write this as this actually. And if I wish, even I can, so, so, so by distributive law, so this is like a number, so by distributive law I can pull this vector, vector v out of this sum actually. So even I can write this vector or this vector as a sum of the scalar i equal to 1 to n, ui, ui star, okay, so shall I write this on other side, okay, let me write this kind of a bit more clearly, so that you can see the meaning of the orthogonal projection in uh, fn, okay, are projecting orthogonally fn onto a finite dimensional surface space. So this would be equal to, so on this side you have this uv, so, okay, so, so, so all these are scalars actually and this is a vector the uv, so if I wish I can put these scalars together and then multiply with v, so, so, so this is like applying the distributive law, so a plus b multiplied by v is same as av plus bv, in other words currently you have this form that the scalars are multiplied with v, so you can put the scalars together and then multiply with the vector v. So I can write this as a matrix i equal to 1 to r ui, ui star, this is scalar multiplied by what you call the vector v. And this is scalar, okay, which is product of two vectors, you can treat this as if that's, you can recover this as, if you write this in kind of a matrix form, you can write this as the matrix U multiplied with U star operated on the, what do you call, V actually, the matrix U, the same matrix, this matrix U, okay, and multiplied with, maybe I should differentiate between the U's otherwise, so, so let's say that this Roman U is the subspace, okay, while U is the matrix that is made up out of the bases 
of the Roman matrix sector. Okay. So this orthogonal projection of v onto this uh, v onto this Roman u. Okay. The subspace u actually. So this is going to be the matrix u multiplied by the conjugate transpose operated onto v. So hence you can also say that the orthogonal projection okay, of Fn onto the subspace this uh, 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 Roman U okay, is equal to the matrix U multiplied by the U star actually. And how to get this matrix U and U star? So the matrix U is that, okay, take the bases of these vectors, put them in columns and you're going to get the matrix U and U already know that what is the meaning of u star actually okay so this is this is really a matrix representation of the map pu so that's the first example okay so u multiplied by u star okay is basically an orthogonal projection so whenever it operates onto a vector it gives you the orthogonal projection of the v okay of the V onto the subspace that is spanned by, okay, onto the subspace that is spanned by the columns of the matrix U, okay, the columns of the matrix U. So I hope this is making sense to you. So that's that's really the first example. Let's take for example another example. Let's talk about the another example. Let's let's see that. Even the projection that you uh, define, for example, the projection of a vector onto another vector, this is also a kind of a, a orthogonal projection, actually. Okay? You, you have seen one kind of the projection in um, what do you call in your inner product spaces chapter. I'm going to say that that projection is also an orthogonal projection, actually. So consider a vector u. Okay. Um, that is non-zero. Okay, you still in you are still in v equal to f n. Okay, consider a vector u in f n. Then consider the span of um, span of the vector u. Span of the vector u, which is a subspace of f n. So instead of Taking, for example, uh, R vectors, just take one vector vector. Okay, just take one vector. For this, I can have a basis actually. So, what would be the basis of a uh, span of U? So, you can get this basis by computing what you call the norm of the U divided by the two norm of the U. Okay, two norm. And I hope you remember by 2 norm I mean that if you have a vector say u1, u2, un, so it's really the Euclidean norm. So it's going to be the square root of sum of i equal to 1 to n ui, ui square actually. Yeah, ui multiplied by the conjugate of u. So it's really the 2 norm. Okay? So I hope that you, you, you remember the 2 norm. So, so this is the orthonormal basis, okay, so orthonormal basis of um, this space U. So instead of taking R vector, so let's take a non-zero vector and a span of it, and this is the basis of it. Okay, and let's consider the orthogonal projection. Now what would be the orthogonal projection? The orthogonal projection of um, of say a vector v from fn onto this span of the vector u is going to be equal to what it is going to be equal to so it's going to be um, uh, it's, it's going to be it's, so you're going to, you have to compute in this manner so it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be u multiplied by u star divided by what do you call the norm of u square and its two norm actually. Okay? U multiplied by u square divided by the two norm. So it's going to be the orthonormalized form actually. So, 
So u divided by the norm of u and u star divided by the norm of u, it's 2 norm. Multiplied by the vector b. Okay? Multiplied by the vector b. So I can again write this as u times um, u star v by associative law divided by the norm of u square. Okay? The norm of u square and hence you can also write this as that this product is going to be the inner product of v with u times the vector u divided by the orthogonal project, uh, the, the norm of u square actually. And if you see, okay, if you see, you know, this is really is the formula for the orthogonal projection that you learned in the chapter of the inner product spaces actually, okay. So this is the formula for projecting the vector v onto the non-zero vector, what do you call, u. And this formula is also an orthogonal projection actually. So this is the orthogonal projection of the entire space Fn, okay, Fn onto the space u which is the span of a single vector u actually, okay. So what does this example shows that the projection that you learned previously, so the projection of one vector onto another vector in Euclidean sense, for example, is really an orthogonal projection actually. So it's really an orthogonal projection. Okay. What is the next? The next is really. prove some of the properties of or to study some of the properties of the orthogonal projection center. That orthogonal projection is a very interesting kind of a map actually. Okay? So it's a very interesting kind of a map. So it says that imagine that uh, this u be a finite dimensional finite dimensional subspace of in a product space V, okay, and this is general. Then projecting first of all, let me show that this projection vector is basically a linear vector actually, okay? It's a linear vector. So this projection is, is a linear map. P U is linear actually. Okay. So if it would be linear, at least in this example, this would be the matrix representation of this linear map. Okay. Onto the subspace. Secondly, orthogonal projection. Orthogonal projection onto the zero subspace is the zero transformation. Okay. So orthogonal. So if you orthogonally project a vector space onto say zero subspace, this is going to be a zero map actually. And orthogonally projecting uh, the, uh, the vector space V onto itself is an identity map. Is an identity map. Okay, so this is what the first thing C, this is interesting. That the range of um, projection map U is equal to this space U actually. Okay, so the, the rate of PU is equal to what do you call U. Um, B is, this is almost evident actually. The kernel of the orthogonal projection of the space V onto the subspace U is 
orthogonal perp of the U actually. So this is the orthogonal perp of the U. The range of the PU is the U and the kernel of orthogonal projection is U. And the part E is that if you take V and you subtract for example the orthogonal projection okay, of vector V 